Hello all, and welcome to one of the most deceiving web series of all time. Today we're going to be looking at a web series called Llamas with Hats, developed by FilmCow. FilmCal was created by Jason Steele and is most known for their series, Charlie the Unicorn, alongside Llamas with Hats. A few months back, YouTube demonetized the original Llamas with Hats show, so to combat this, they recut it for brand conscientiousness. Normally in a recut, people try to remove things to achieve certain requirements, but FilmCal ended up creating a very interesting and deep lore instead. We're going to be looking at both of these versions to figure out the exact lore of this dark and twisted show. Llamas with Hats is an interesting web series where we follow our main character Carl, no sorry, it's Carl, as he terrorizes his housemate Paul. Carl. My stomach was making the rumblies Carl. that only hands would satisfy. Carl is a dangerous sociopath with a long history of violence, his words, and would ramp up his sadistic behavior with every episode. Starting with simple murder, up to dropping nuclear bombs, and then all the way to ripping holes in time and space as an efficient way of collecting baby hands. Eventually, Paul moves out after six episodes? What took him so long? Which starts Carl's spiral into madness. He makes a sheep wear a custom Paul mask to be disappointed with his activities until he eventually just talks to himself while the mask is nailed to a tree. However, something unexpected happens. The eyes of the mask glow red and it begins begins hovering on its own, speaking to Carl. It pushes Carl to finish his work until he eventually destroys the entire world. The ending of the show is very sad, with Carl finally being overwhelmed with emotion after realizing he accidentally killed the real Paul as well. At first glance, this show may seem pretty straightforward. We follow Carl's descent into madness, and when the only thing that was keeping him grounded leaves, his brain seems to hallucinate and manifest its own version of Paul, narrating his own subconscious until Carl destroys all life on the planet. When Carl realizes that Paul is dead, the mask suddenly appears around his neck, lifeless, as his brain accepts Paul's death. Again, at first glance, this seems to perfectly explain everything we're looking at in this show. However, cracks begin to form when looking a little closer. In episode 10, the mask does things that a simple hallucination would not be able to do. The first of these events is at the beginning of this episode. Carl is in a dark space, unable to move. To help him, the mask turns on the light so Carl can take in his surroundings. A simple hallucination could not turn on a light switch, and we know these lights could not be motion activated as Carl physically cannot move due to his leg being severely broken. I can't show you how broken his legs are, so if you want to see for yourself, watch Llamas with Hats episode 10, but for the rest of you who would rather not see that, trust me, he cannot move. And at the end of the episode, the mask tells Carl that he'll have to get up on his own, but again, there is no way that he could do this. For him to be able to stand up again, as we see him doing in episode 11, there has to be intervention. Considering Carl is in his flesh pit and the mask is the only thing around, the mask itself would have had to intervene. The more you think, the more the mask could not be a mere hallucination. The only way for us to truly begin to understand what's happening is by taking a look at the recut for brand conscientiousness. The recut starts with the YouTube logo speaking to the audience while wearing a Michael Jackson style fedora. This YouTube logo talks about the original llamas with hats being demonetized and recut for the advertisers. Now, this already starts very interestingly. The YouTube logo is starting to act similar in style to the Paul mask, being a floating talking object wearing a hat, and is speaking very highly of the advertisers as if they were some divine being. Now, the start of this recut is very similar to the actual llamas with hats, except for the crappy little re-edits. The dead guy is replaced with a lazily drawn human, and all lines discussing sadistic behavior are replaced with dub lines discussing water bottles and brands like Amazon. Eventually, the entire location is replaced by a mall in the middle of a summer sales event with a pop-up ad for said summer sale. When the two llamas begin to argue further, YouTube intervenes, pushing the video further into an endless void as to not cause clutter. As YouTube continues, the void even responds. Eventually, YouTube replays the show, except we see something that was never actually in Llamas with Hats. There are three large stone walls with a different symbol on them. The first being the lamb, the second being the hand of God, and the third being the sinner. 
We then finally cut back to the actual show, except everything is motionless. The mask is still, and Carl has been replaced by a cardboard cutout. This recut ends with the void taking over the entire show and a pan up to YouTube who is in distress asking for its hat before a mouse cursor comes on screen and clicks the YouTube logo. This whole recut is a statement on the idea of brand conscientiousness and monetization. Jason Steele expresses that with a focus on brand monetization and advertising, the humanity, emotion, and meaning in videos will slowly be stripped away until there is nothing left except brands. This whole video is a very important statement that was uploaded at a perfect time, one month after the writer strikes began and at a time where everyone began reconsidering how they consumed content, but even this video packed a huge amount of lore inside of it. The first thing we're going to look at are the three large stone walls. The show presented these each with the words, the lamb over the sheep, the hand of God over the hand chair, and the sinner over Carl. This is clearly something lore related, but what exactly does it mean? Well, let's first start with the concept of the lamb. This whole sequence is very similar to the look of a religious setting. Three main symbols literally set in stone. To think about the lamb, we'll need to take a religious approach. There are multiple meanings of the lamb. The lamb is resembled commonly in Christianity as a representation of Jesus, but it can also resemble gentleness, innocence, and purity. None of these episodes really hold to that idea of innocence, so instead we will focus on the idea of Jesus. Jesus is seen differently in different religions, but the majority of them see Jesus as a prophet. A prophet is regarded as a being in contact with the divine. Whoever the lamb resembles, it must be someone in contact with the divine deity of this show. Now, the hand of God is seen quite often in many depictions of God. In some religions and practices, they are not allowed to depict God in its entirety, so instead they show a hand to represent it. The hand of God in this context most likely represents the actual main deity in this show. There are two different versions of this show, each having their own representations of the sinner, the lamb, and the hand of God. First, we will look at the original Llamas with Hats, episodes 1 through 12. The sinner is very easy to figure out as it is the actual artistic representation. Our sinner is our dangerous sociopath with violent tendencies, Carl. As we mentioned before, our lamb has to be someone or something that is seen as a prophet. It must have connections with the divine, leading people to act a certain way. This clearly fits the Paul mask. After Paul left, Carl began quote-unquote freestyling it, doing much less damage than he previously did. Once the mask shows up, it insists that Carl must finish his work. The mask instructs and directs Carl on how to properly continue and complete said work, even though Carl was never doing this for a cause, only to try and one-up himself to hear real Paul's reaction. Even when Carl was literally unable to move in his flesh pit, the mask insisted that Carl must continue his work. Carl eventually destroyed everything, and even then, the mask insisted that his work was not done and it's almost time. Almost time for what exactly? We never get a direct answer, but we can definitely speculate. We mentioned earlier that at the very end of the show, once Carl realizes that Paul is actually dead, the mask is suddenly returned around his neck, lifeless. Now, the reason Carl even went to Paul's new apartment is because he didn't believe that the Paul mask was the real Paul, so confirming this idea should have changed nothing in relation to the mask in Carl's acceptance of Paul's death. This has to be a decision from the mask itself. For some reason, the mask decided that this was the moment where Carl's work was finally complete. To figure out why this work is complete now, we have to look at the very end of the show. Carl stands atop a broken bridge, crying and yelling to himself before he finally dies. We know that the mask pushed him to destroy old life on Earth, meaning he himself was the only life still remaining. The mask finally left Carl once he lost all meaning to his life, leading to his own death. His work was only complete when all life on Earth was truly eradicated. Our lamb is none other than the Paul mask. 
Now, the hand of God for this series is not a simple answer. This isn't anyone we can see or have ever been hinted towards. We can only assume that this is some evil deity that wants all life on Earth eradicated. We know that Carl started out by leading the world into destruction by himself before he broke down and began improvising. This was the moment that the deity had to push Carl back on the right path, taking the idea of Paul to continue pushing him. We know that there has to be some divine influence from the Llamas with Hats recut, where we can see what can only be described as a biblically accurate water bottle. Divinity is influential in this story. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned is that there is one more version of Llamas with Hats. It's a book called Llamas with Hats Babies, and it takes a very different approach than the recut. It presents Llamas with Hats taking place inside of a mental health clinic, with Paul as one of the patients. While this is an interesting concept, it doesn't really track with Carl as he disappears in this story. In the regular Llamas with Hats, we follow Carl's escapades as he kills everyone, and if it was all inside of his head, there should be no reason that Paul would be in this clinic in the first place. Not to mention that the entire story established by the recut wouldn't be possible. There doesn't seem to be a way to connect the original 1-12 to episodes to the book and to the recut, so we're going to stray away from the book in this episode. If you want to see me address the original show and the book, make sure to leave a comment down below so we can solve that story as well. Now that we've solved the original Llamas with Hats story, we must turn to the idea portrayed in the recut. Who do the Lamb, the Sinner, and the Hand of God represent? Well, in this recut, the ideas presented are not fictional characters, but real concepts. We must remember that YouTube had demonetized Film Cow, marking Llamas with Hats as 18+. Throughout this this entire video, YouTube is shown as the one who speaks for the advertisers. It makes its decisions based on what it thinks is best, even satisfied with its own work at the very end. Our lamb, the one who speaks for the deity, is YouTube itself. This would mean that the advertisers would be our hand of God. This even connects in the story as the void, which was seen to be what the advertisers want most and the perfect portrait of content, speaks directly to YouTube, even sending an advertised angel to speak to it. Eventually, similar to Jesus in the Christian faith, YouTube ascends to a higher form. Now, what does this mean for our sinner? Well, simple. Our sinner in this scenario is Film Cow. They created something that our advertiser deity doesn't like, so the prophet, YouTube, intervened and changed it to depict itself better in the eyes of the advertisers. Both versions of the show take the same concept and apply it very differently. One of them is a fun, dark show, and the other is a statement on the current condition of content. Both, however, are solvable. One, it's plot, and the other, it's message. Just as Carl was once coerced into bad decisions, so are our content platforms being coerced into creating inhuman content strictly for advertising purposes. Carl was never hallucinating, but being coerced into doing something that he overall never wanted to do. This, my friends, is the meaning behind Llamas with Hats. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. There will be more Film Cow videos coming down the line, so make sure to ring that bell to get notified of those uploads. Comment down below if you have any information that could either prove or disprove this theory. Once again, this is still just a theory, so it can always be disproven later when we learn more information. If you want to talk to my team and I directly, make sure to join in our Discord or check out our subreddit. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.